in the beginning, there was nothing but infinite potential. Then, from zero came one, and the universe was born. Combining one second and zero second, we formed the Dicta world. sector is this whole idea of the metaverse, the idea of a unified virtual world where people can play games and socialize and build new economic systems and create virtual property. The next decade will be a tragic one, changing every aspect of our lives. Food, living, travel, health, how we produce, how city operate, and how countries flourish. Data and digitization are key enablers to climate action and climate performance. They help model, visualize, monitor, plan, and optimize. The automobile revolution is characterized by electrification, low carbon, intelligence, connectivity, and sharing. on the future of ICT innovation. The development of the ICT industry over the past decade has provided unprecedented tools to change the world. We believe that the next decade will be a golden age of ICT innovation. Hello everyone, I'm Yuan Xiaoshan. Welcome to Huawei's Intelligent World 2030 Forum. The world of science fiction gives us all kinds of expectations and participations about the future. In the real world, technology is going to return those ideas into reality. Digital technology is developing at a lightning speed, spur industry innovation, providing economic efficiency, and also promoting the well-being of humanity. In this forum, we will start from the need of human development to explore how technology will drive changes in the world and also what new modes of living will emerge. We have invited futurists, industry leaders, and also think tank experts to share their ideas of the future with us. Our first guest is the renowned American futurist and the pop science author Steven Johnson. Mr. Johnson has been called the Darwin of technology and also was named one of the top 10 brands of the digital future by the UK's Perspective magazine. Now we will connect to Mr. Johnson in the United States to hear his idea about the future. Hello, my name is Stephen Johnson. I'm a writer whose work has studied the past and future of innovation. 
in books like Where Good Ideas Come From, in television series like How We Got to Now and Extra Life. Today, I want to talk to you about why I'm so excited about the future, what some of us have started to call the exponential age. Now, for the past three decades or so, we've seen the impact of exponential changes on our computers, thanks to Moore's Law. We're all walking around with supercomputers in our pockets that cost less than $1,000 and have the processing power of a machine that used to be the size of a refrigerator and cost millions. But I would argue that we're only just now entering a true exponential age where all of society is transformed and improved thanks to exponential change in our technology. And the three macro trends that illustrate this are the dramatic advances in our ability, one, to sequence our genome, two, in solar panel efficiency, and three, in machine learning. Now, in the 1990s, it cost $10 billion and took 10 years to sequence a single human genome. By 2007, the cost of analyzing your DNA had dropped to under a million dollars and took a matter of weeks. Today, we can sequence a person's entire genome in an hour for less than $100. Similarly, the price per watt of solar modules has dropped from $100 per watt to around 10 cents a watt since 1976. Now, in machine learning, we've seen some incredible examples of exponential advances in recent years, including some chess algorithms that start with only the most basic rules of chess, zero pre-programmed knowledge of chess strategy. And by the end of a single day, the algorithms had become the most advanced chess players on the planet, using a completely bottom-up approach to learning. They played 44 million games in a single day, while the average human chick grandmaster might play only 100,000 games over the course of his or her career. Now, our brains have a difficult time grasping the magnitude of change that exponential growth makes possible. The advances we're starting to see in fields like genetics or machine learning are the equivalent of an automobile that used to cost $40,000 with a top speed of 150 miles per hour three decades ago, now costing a fraction of a penny and traveling at the speed of light. That rate of change would be ludicrous with a mechanical object like an automobile, but with the information technology, it's not just possible, it's the reality. What all these technological developments mean in practice is that over the next few decades, we will have ubiquitous access to genetic knowledge, clean energy, and artificial intelligence. Sharing those resources at costs that are almost too cheap to meter will usher in profound changes in how we live and how we work. Now, I'm not going to discuss the trends in solar power because we're focused more on information technology here, but just think about how many problems over the course of human history have come from energy sources being scarce and expensive. A world where energy is incredibly cheap and renewable is going to be a very different place. In terms of the information technologies, the most dramatic impact, I think, will be on our health. Human life expectancy doubled over the past century. But most of the changes came from reducing childhood mortality. The next revolution, powered by machine learning and the genomic revolution, will expand what we call health span, not just lifespan, allowing people to live at full capacity into their hundreds and beyond. Immunotherapies will finally allow us to win the war on cancer. The mRNA technology that produced a COVID vaccine in record time will be used to train the immune system to destroy what we call senescent cells, which is one of the primary drivers of the aging process itself. Machine learning algorithms will revolutionize drug discovery and design because the algorithms can explore trillions of possible molecular combinations in just a matter of days a discovery process that would have taken human researchers years to do in the past. The changes from this health revolution will be profound ones. 
The whole idea of a retirement age will stop making sense when 65-year-olds can reasonably expect to live another 40 or 50 years at near peak mental and physical condition. Now, right now, one of the current buzzwords in the tech sector is this whole idea of the metaverse, the idea of a unified virtual world where people can play games and socialize and build new economic systems and create virtual property. But I think the more significant development may be what the computer scientist David Glartner called many years ago the mirror world, a complex simulation of our real world society running on future supercomputers. Today, we use complex multivariable simulations to model weather and climate systems. An entire planet of meteorological data is collected and analyzed and then used to simulate possible futures. Everything from whether it's going to rain on Tuesday to what will happen to the Gulf Stream in 50 years. Some of the most powerful computers in the world today are used for this purpose. But that kind of computational power is going to be abundant a decade from now, which will enable us to build even more complex simulations of human society, not just climate. These simulations will pull in all the available information, past and present, from all aspects of life. Health records, tra traffic patterns, economic activity, test scores by school district, crime data. And based on that just unimaginably rich trove of information, the simulations will both alert us to emerging patterns that we would have otherwise missed, but also, most importantly, it will allow us to run simulations of potential futures. So, for example, a city planner exploring the idea of converting a neighborhood to pedestrian only would be able to run a simulation to see the impact on economic activity or car traffic in, in nearby neighborhoods. Police departments will run virtual experiments to see the impact of different interventions on street crime or murder rates. The exponential revolution will also transform our creative work. Already, we're seeing works of art created by algorithms. These are some examples of machine learning artwork shared by a software designer named Hannah Johnston. This is a watercolor painting of Times Square made by a computer, <laughs> another in the style of the post-impressionists, another vaguely in the style of Art Nouveau. They're not bad. But the really interesting future is not about handing over creative control to the machines entirely, but instead embarking on something like a duet with them. Coming decades will be characterized by a golden age of collaboration between human and machine intelligence. Now, cognitive psychologists have long demonstrated that neurodiversity leads to more innovative thinking and problem solving. This is the importance of having different kinds of intelligence or intellectual backgrounds coming together to solve a problem or come up with a new idea. Algorithms will greatly expand the kind of neurodiversity that we're able to work with, not replacing human intelligence, but augmenting it. Imagine a lawyer sitting down to write a brief on an important new case. As she develops her argument, she draws on suggestions from a machine learning algorithm that's been trained on the entire corpus of every legal document ever entered into the public record. Similarly, architects will use intelligent software to generate new potential arrangements of physical space, like the molecular combinations of drug discovery. The machines won't create the final product or decision, but they will suggest new variables or possibilities that the humans might not have come up with on their own. We've already had a hint of this with autocomplete tools in some of our software programs where the algorithms suggest words or phrases to complete an email message. In the coming decades, machines will not just be suggesting banal kind of everyday phrases, but actually offering us genuinely new ideas. I have to say, of all the positive changes coming thanks to these exponential trends, this is the one that I'm most looking forward to. Our bodies and our societies are going to be transformed by these developments. But to me, the most intriguing part is what happens to our minds when we begin to think collaboratively with software. 
In that spirit, I've actually trained a machine learning algorithm to come up with a closing line or two for my talk today. <laughs> I gave the preceding paragraphs that I'd written uh, to the software and I had the software suggest potential endings. And they were all actually pretty good, but I think this was the one that really hit the mark. What will that do to our ideas of what it means to be human? How will it change the way we think? What new insights will we discover? I'm looking forward to finding out. Thank you very much. As Stephen Johnson said, we are entering an exponential age. But what are the big trends that will shape next decade? And how will digital technologies evolve? I'd like to invite David Wang, Executive Director, President of ICT Products and Solutions, and the president of ICT strategy and marketing of Huawei to share Huawei's insight into the intelligent world of 2030. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Intelligent World 2030 Forum. Despite the pandemic, we have never stopped exploring the future. Humans are born to explore. We can see this in the handprint left behind throughout history. The first one is a handprint saved in the cave painting thousands of years ago. As Picasso said, there's no past or future in art, only amazing beauties that live on today. The second one is an X-ray of a woman's hand. When a curious, the young physicist discovered X-rays for the first time. One of his first pictures was his wife's hand, showing off their wedding ring. The third one is a digital handprint in the metaverse, the metaverse will combine biometric features and digital information, creating unlimited possibility for the future intelligent world. The dreams of yesterday are the invention of today. Over 2,400 years ago, Chinese philosopher Mozart described the vehicle we drive today. Da Vinci designed aircrafts 500 years ago. One of the fathers of the science fiction predicted video course 100 years ago. Without exploration, there will be no dreams, no invention, no social progress. So what does Huawei explore? 30 years ago, we decided to enrich lives through communication. 10 years ago, we decided to connect every corner of the world to build a better connected world. So now, our vision and mission is to bring digital to every person, home, and organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. Next, let's watch a video about our insights into the future. Around every object in this world, connections are forming. What kind of world will tomorrow bring? Intelligent World 2030. Unbound exploration. Unveil the future. AI will be able to predict infectious disease patterns for better epidemic response. AI will be able to target treatment, minimizing damage to healthy cells. Lighter, more portable devices will mean wider access to specialist care. Health will be computable, improving quality of life. Precision agriculture systems will build visualized data graphs. Smart vertical farms will anchor food supply chains. 3D printing will come to the dining table through low carbon meats and proteins. Turning data into green food for healthy, inclusive nutrition. 
digital remote storage plus automated delivery will make our homes more livable. Intelligent building management will bring us closer to zero carbon habitats. Smart homes will become truly intelligent, understanding and providing exactly what you need. New interactive experiences make for more human spaces. Autonomous driving will turn your vehicle into a mobile third space. More vehicle sharing will mean faster, low carbon transport. Smart, low carbon transport puts the world at our fingertips. Healthcare, food, living space, transportation. We believe in technology forging a brighter future. This video just watched showed what the intelligent world will look like. So today, on behalf of Huawei, I'm here to launch our Intelligent World 2030 white paper. Together, let's explore the Intelligent World 2030. This white paper sets eight directions for exploration, explain how ICT technology will address the challenges we face, and it describes the new opportunities that await organizations and individuals. We believed exploring the future means exchanging ideas. Over the past three years, we met with over 1,000 scholars, customers, and partners, and held over 2,000 workshops. We analyzed the data from international organizations, scientific journals, and consulting firms. These ideas contributed to our insight into the future. But this is just the beginning. The future intelligent world will have unlimited possibilities. We will have to work together to explore and shape a better tomorrow. We want to live a better life in 2030 with more fruit, larger living spaces, renewable energy, digital services, and no traffic. To meet these needs, we have set eight directions for exploration, including health, food, living, and transportation. In 2030, we will be able to identify the potential health problems shifting the folks from treatment to prevention, driven by IoT and AI. Precision medical solutions will become a reality in the future. In 2030, water farms are not affected by climate will enter our lives. 3D painting will make it possible for people to create artificial meat so that we can turn data into the green food for all. Our homes and offices will become zero carbon buildings. The next generation IoT technology will build adaptive home environment that understand our needs. The new energy vehicle will become the third mobile species. The new aircraft will make energy services more efficient, reduce the cost of the medical supply, and change the way we commute. By 2030, communication networks will go beyond connecting billions of people to connecting billions of the things. The network of 2030 will be AI-native, green and low carbon, with cubic broadband, deterministic experience, harmonized communication and sensing. Network performance will continue to improve from today's gigabit access to 10 gigabit access. Broadband coverage will exceed beyond the ground to the air and even space. Future communication network will support deterministic services experience. User will be connected to multi-level computing resources with 1 millisecond latency in cities, 10 millisecond latency in city clusters, and 100 millisecond latency over backbone networks. The network will also provide 5.9 availabilities and build 
SRA guaranteed virtual networks to meet industry needs. There will be 200 billion connections worldwide by 2030. Monthly cellular traffic per person will exceed 600 gigabits, and there will be 1 billion XR users. This will make the virtual world and the physical world more interactive and deliver ubiquitous hyper real experience, mobile internet, cloud computing, and big data were all new things 10 years ago. Now, there are truths that have reshaped our society. By 2030, the general computing power will reach 3D flops. AI computing power will exceed 100Z flops. In the future, the digital and the physical world will come closer together. People will interact with machines, and AI will be available everywhere. This will help industry move from digital to intelligent. Future computing will face the physical limitations. To overcome these challenges, we will have to innovate in terms of the software, architecture, and system. More importantly, the industry must work together to create new foundation for computing, to push the limits of the semiconductors, and to achieve the intelligent, green, and secure computing. Over the next decade, we will enter a new era of the low carbon, electric, and intelligent digital power. Transforming energy structure is key to addressing climate change. New renewable energies are being commercialized, and electronic and digital technologies are being used together to create an energy cloud and manage the energy system by data. By 2030, solar wind will be a major energy source. 50% of all electricity will come from renewable energy, and installed PV capacity will reach 3,000 gigawatts. In terms of the consumption, electricity will account for 30% of the global energy consumption. The 50% of vehicle sold will be electric, and over 80% digital infrastructure will be green. While we will work with our partners to drive this digital power transformation and build a better, greener future. Finally, vehicles are also becoming electric and intelligent. We predict that by 2030, autonomous vehicles will make up 20% of the Chinese market whole vehicle computing power will exceed 5,000 tops, and in-vehicle network transmission speed per link will exceed 100 gigabits per second. In the future, the auto industry will see development in intelligent driving, intelligent space, intelligent service, and intelligent operations. Huawei hope to use our ICT technology to help companies build good cars. This future will depend on our choice today. The next decade will be an intelligent one, changing every aspect of our lives, food, living, travel, health, how we produce, how cities operate, and how countries flourish. We believe the greatest wisdom is found in shared ideas. Dreams are the key driver of the social progress. Moving towards the next decade, let's work together to shape a better, intelligent world. After hearing the vision of the Intelligent World 2030 white paper, I believe I'm not alone eager to see the future of transportation. Digital technology is making transportation safer, more intelligent, comfortable, efficient, and low carbon. Next, we will have the father of Asian electric vehicles, Professor Cixi Chen who is the founding president of the World Electric Vehicle Association, academician of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, and a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering. Professor Cixi Chen is committed to combine the strengths of the East and the West, and also promoting scientific progress to improve well-being of humanity. Let's welcome Professor Cixi Chen to share his vision and insight for the future of transportation. 
Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be here at the Intelligent World 2030 Forum. My topic today is transportation today and tomorrow. This will cover the automotive revolution and the mobility revolution. My presentation has three parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about the importance of travel to the development of human society. In the second part, we will examine how the travel revolution works. It will not be in isolation, but rather it will be integrated with the energy revolution and the information revolution. That's why I've put forward the 4N4F theory, which consists of four networks, energy, information, transportation, and humanity, and four flows, energy, information, material, and value. Finally, in the third part, I will discuss the future of travel. There is a saying, mobility is freedom. Mobility is a powerful expression in our pursuit of happiness. If you can move, if you can travel, you can experience freedom and happiness. Let's go back in time. In the 19th century, people spent their entire lives in the small villages where they were born. By the 20th century, cars had been invented and people could leave their villages, their countries, and explore the greater world. Nowadays, humans can even leave planet Earth and go into the wider universe. MIT has a book called The Machine That Changed the World. This machine is the automobile, but this world-changing machine has also caused problems for the world. Air pollution, traffic jams, accidents and casualties, and unsustainable energy. So automobiles today need to undergo a revolution to have a place in our future world. The automobile revolution is characterized by electrification, low carbon, intelligence, connectivity, and sharing. We are entering an era of connected intelligent vehicles. Connectivity and intelligence have completely transformed the vehicles of today, which means vehicles have to be redefined. Intelligent connected vehicles are not only means of transportation, there are nodes of IoT, sources of big data, terminals of mobile broadband, and promoters of 5G communication. Moreover, intelligent connected cars are computers and distributed energy sources so they should be equipped with advanced systems for sensing, decision-making, and information. We are proposing a new form of collaboration between humans, vehicles, and roads. Cars need to be intelligent with high-precision cameras, millimeter-wave radar, high-precision positioning antennae, distributed computing, and ultrasonic wave radar. Smart road systems need to be equipped with high-precision cameras and millimeter-wave radar for real-time calculation and comprehensive perception. Smart control centers need to achieve real-time monitoring, scheduling, and control on the cloud. It is not only cars that need to be electrified, but all kinds of vehicles. This is Hyperloop, the world's fastest method of transportation, still under development. This is a maglev train. We can also have flying cars and electric planes. We can use pure electric power for small electric planes. But for large electric planes, we need hybrid power, motors, and turbines working together. If the travel revolution is to be sustainable, it must be integrated with the energy revolution and the information revolution. We need energy and information in vehicles. 
which is why I've proposed the 4N, 4F. 4N, 4F means collaboration of the three revolutions, the automobile revolution, the energy revolution, and the information revolution. 4N, 4F maximizes digital productivity and combines the social, the cyber, and the physical worlds. The convergence works by improving the utilization of resources through system coupling and equipment sharing. The key to this integration is the humanity network. This network is a superstructure that interacts with the economic foundation. This is a form of guidance for humanity that addresses the complex interworking and dependencies that arise from the convergence of the three worlds, creating value for the economy and the environment. The 4N4F theory comprises a philosophy, scientific rationale, and engineering practices. Its philosophy is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Its scientific rationale is based on the laws governing the interaction of energy, information, and human behavior. Its engineering practices are predicated on an energy operating system that combines the energy system with artificial intelligence in a terminal edge cloud structure. The core of 4N4F is a deep integration of the social, cyber, and the physical worlds. From this, we can turn data into information, information into knowledge, and knowledge into intelligence. Intelligence is then combined with transportation, creating smart transportation. There will be no more traffic accidents or congestion. Smart transportation will support low carbon travel, and you'll be able to reach your destination safely and without hassle. 4N4F is an all-encompassing strategy that can drive the digital economy. Why do I say this? The Internet of Energy only integrates energy and information, and the Internet of Vehicles only integrates energy, information, and transportation. 4N4F, however, also includes human factors which are indispensable. The humanity network is intertwined with pioneering ideas, advanced laws and regulations, and the superstructure. Only by integrating the superstructure and economy can we fully tap into and propel the digital economy. This can also facilitate the fourth and the fifth industrial revolutions. The first three industrial revolutions witnessed the invention of the steam engine, electric power, and then computers. The fourth industrial revolution is centered on artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has evolved to a third generation featuring autonomous learning. In practice, however, we find that our problems cannot be solved with just artificial intelligence, or more broadly speaking, technology. Take the energy revolution as, as an example. We want energy to be low carbon, economical, and safe. To meet all three of these requirements, we have to guide technology with a human touch. Therefore, in the fifth industrial revolution, we will see artificial intelligence combined with humanity and the environment. The European Union's Industry 5.0 seeks to build a sustainable, human-centric, and resilient industry. Japan has also described its Society 5.0 as people-oriented. 4N4F is structurally consistent with and can therefore enable carbon neutrality. The energy network comprises sources, grids, loads, and storage. The information network has data, information, knowledge, and intelligence. The humanity network incorporates new society, culture, and services, 
and the transportation network consists of mobility, organization, trade, and value. With 4N4F, we can reduce energy intensity, carbon intensity, and logistics costs. In this last section, I want to discuss the future of travel. There are four promising goals here. First, we can enable green travel with more electrification and make sure we do so in all transportation scenarios. Second, we can work towards higher levels of autonomy and transform transportation into a mobile third space. The European Union put forward a vision to achieve full autonomous driving by 2030. China's National Development and Reform Commission wants to achieve conditional driving automation and large-scale production by 2025 and implement a standard intelligent vehicle system by 2050. The next point is shared mobility, which helps improve transportation efficiency and facilitate low carbon travel. The key word is mobility as a service. Finally, we can explore networking to realize safe and efficient autonomous driving. Thank you for listening. In other challenges, such as rising global temperature and melting glaciers, are worsening at an alarming rate. More and more countries are committing to the goal of carbon neutrality to mitigate climate change. This has resulted in the second wave of energy transformation. What role will ICT play in this transformation? Next, Mr. Dennis Depp, Global Managing Director of Roland Berger and also an expert on energy and also environment, will share with us how digital intelligence can shape its carbon neutral future. Let's welcome Mr. Depp. Hello. I'm Denis Depou, and I'm a Global Managing Director of European consultancy Roland Berger. I'm working out of Shanghai and I've been based in China for seven years. We all know that our planet is burning. Climate change is the most urgent global issue that we face today and is one of which that will impact generations to come. Germany is the country of origin of our firm, Roland Berger, experienced the worst floods earlier this year, with many experts pointing climate change in the North Atlantic as the source for these catastrophic events. Almost simultaneously, here in China, Zhengzhou has experienced torrential rains in the summer, once in a thousand years, causing loss of lives and economic havoc. Time for action. At the current pace of emissions, our credits to limit warming to 1.5 degrees which would be needed, is four to eight years. For two degrees, which is too much anyway, it is 20 to 25 years. So still not enough time. The clock is ticking. 137 countries have pledged carbon neutrality, 90% of them between 2045 and 2050. May appear very distant, but the lead time to the deep industry and societal transformation needed with long investment cycles, particularly in the energy and mobility infrastructure sectors, counts by decades. All these carbon neutrality commitments are putting pressure on solutions to meet the responsibility challenge, but it's also a matter of competitiveness. Consumers will want to buy products with lighter or zero carbon content. Legislators across the planet, while thinking of the way to penalize and tax high carbon content in their system, are also looking at ways to tax imports that would not have borne a similar carbon cost. I am a proud European because after pioneering the fight against climate change more than 20 years ago, the European Union again still is at the forefront with the recently announced Fit for 55 legislative package. But let's wind back a bit. After Kyoto, European commitments towards mostly renewable energy, stemming from Germany, 
and energy intensity reduction were already economically and technology motivated. The underlying idea was to create a new market and a technology advantage for Europe within the European single market. It worked with an emissions reduction roadmap respected and renewable energy production multiplied by 2.5 in 10 years. However, the competitive advantage of Europe is less than 30. China benefited a lot, which in the same period entered WTO and became the producer of most renewable energy equipment with respectively 70 and 60% of solar PV modules and wind turbine markets globally. Lesson learned for the future, climate change can also advance technology while providing competitive advantage to the leaders. Europe also learned that it needs to protect itself from carbon leakage or the ability to outsource emissions globally. And this is why in the EU Green Deal and the Fit for 55 program, a carbon border adjustment mechanism is proposed as early as 2025 for some heavy industries to materialize that competitive advantage. Europe also wants this time to leverage its measures to create technology progress and advantage with an estimated 2 million new jobs. Climate performance is the new competitiveness. Shifting to lighter carbon operations and business models will be a key driver for regional and global competition between countries, regions, and companies alike. Coming back to China, the country has huge challenges because of the mountain of coal it starts with, and because its energy consumption will continue to grow, although the energy intensity of its economic growth has been reduced in the last 10 years by one third. But China also has unique advantages. I will only name a few, but they are critical. First is long-term perspective, planning and execution discipline, to say the least. Second, supply chains that are gradually becoming integrated beyond China at regional level in Southeast Asia, a movement that the RCEP treaty will accelerate. China also still has physical space and renewable energy resources to develop contrary to a lot of other countries. China has also a huge potential for carbon sinks with reforestation or restoration of wetlands serving other ecological purposes. Finally, China enjoys pervasive digitization both on the consumer side and on the supply side, which will play a big role going forward to create competitiveness from carbon neutrality. How to achieve carbon neutrality? Greenhouse gases emissions are generated by every human, social, and economic activity, mostly through combustion of fossil fuel, chemical processes, and leakage of some gases. Power generation, mostly by coal-fired power stations, contributes half of China's CO2 emissions. Industrial production contributes another third of China's CO2 emissions. Transportation by road, rail, water, and air, domestic and international, uh, contributes 10% of uh, China's CO2 emissions. Buildings is another source, up to 6% of uh, greenhouse gases emissions in China. Related to buildings' energy efficiency uh, in operating these buildings, but also the building materials that are uh, the building made of. And then waste, waste disposal and treatment, as well as agriculture, generates the balance of CO2 emissions. So as we can see, energy, mobility, and buildings are the three core to reducing greenhouse gases emissions and reaching carbon neutrality. Now, how to reach carbon neutrality and how can digitization contribute? The first and main contribution to carbon neutrality is the reduction of emissions upfront. How to achieve this? Let me provide some concrete examples and the role played by data and digital technologies. First of all, what is not measured cannot be managed, let alone reduced. Therefore, the evaluation of the emissions related to every activity is core to any attempt to then optimize greenhouse gases emissions. In most cases, emissions are not actually monitored, but they are calculated based on algorithms modeling CO2 emissions of all types of activities. Data is at the core of feeding into these models. For city activities, such as traffic or utilities, this is data 
generated by existing information systems of local governments. For industrial activities, we're talking about instrumentation and control systems of production machinery. In both cases, this data can be transformed into real-time or frequent monitoring of activities. One district of Mannheim in Germany applied a smart power grid system, which is constructed upon the data collected from smart meters to help saving uh, energy. Direct carbon reduction achievement was observed on this project. According to the experiment of 200 residents uh, in one phase of the project, a 6 to 8% reduction of daily energy consumption was achieved with the equivalent reduction of uh, CO2 emission. These wealth of data can also be used to virtualize city planning and operations, for example, enabling simulation, better design or future improvements of cities based on actual infrastructure usage data. Here we are talking about encouraging a frugal use of resources and maximizing utilization of existing infrastructure by smart planning, design, and operations. Urban environment is the single largest contributor to climate change with two-thirds of the emissions. This is why low carbon planning must be enabled by cities to lower their carbon footprint. Software company Dassault System, as an example, provides multiple virtualization solutions enabling low carbon urban planning, which in turn enables new urban design supported by environmentally optimized decisions. Reducing commuting time through land allocation between industrial, commercial, and residential usage can optimize mobility and result in lower carbon footprint. Stockholm in Sweden, which plans to become carbon neutral by 2040, has implemented a best practice in the field of intelligent transportation planning. Local government reconstructed traffic routes to encourage low carbon commuting lifestyles by simulating the functional layouts, road networks, and their carbon emissions. 93% of the city's residents use public transportation or low carbon ways to travel because of these initiatives resulting in lower carbon footprint of transport. Building energy efficiency is also key to saving energy. This comes from a combination of better design to avoid heat or cold leaks, but it's also lower carbon content of building materials such as cement, concrete, glass, and steel achieved through industrial process optimization. Building management through continuous monitoring of key performance indicators around occupancy, heat and cold and lighting, for example, and optimization of the usage of facilities will also result in uh, lower carbon emissions. Energy efficiency in production processes can be reached by using more efficient industrial processes, giving up the combustion of fossil fuel through electrification of furnaces, for example, or tighter control of process temperature and pressure. This is where digitization plays a key role to provide instrumentation and control, real-time monitoring, and algorithmic process regulation to generate energy savings. Data and digitization are key enablers to climate action and climate performance. They help model, visualize, monitor, plan, and optimize. But this entails the deployment of several key technologies, IoT and the industrial internet to generate and collect the basic data needed through smart and automated meters, intelligent sensors, smart wearables, etc. The connectivity infrastructure is also key with 5G and the cloud, given the need for massive, frequent, and low latency communication. Machine learning is needed to process the mass of new data, enabling the understanding of greenhouse gas emissions and the way to optimize them and improve. Beyond technology, what is key is the definition of these multiple use cases, scenarios that are related to climate action. Corporations, as well as governments, are tackling the climate challenge out of responsibility, compliance, but also to increase their competitiveness. Digital technologies enable new approaches to lowering 
their carbon footprint. Thank you for your attention. Our two guests should share with us the future trends and role of ICT in transportation and energy. What direction will ICT develop towards in the future? Now, I'd like to invite Ms. Wang Zhiqing, Vice President of China Academy of Information and Communication Technology, to share with us the developing trends of ICT industry and how to use ICT to build a sustainable future. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to share our thoughts on the future trends of ICT development. From the perspective of overall demand, the ICT industry still has a large room for development in the next decade. First, demand will continue to grow. It is estimated that growth will increase by more than 10 times the current rates in mature areas, such as number of smartphone users, data centers, and supercomputing capacity. Growth in an emerging fields like AI and autonomous driving will be even faster, growing tenfold or even hundredfold. Second, requirements are constantly changing. ICT will be fully integrated into all industries. Ubiquitous and personalized scenarios will result in higher requirements on diversified technologies. ICT innovation, including autonomous driving, VRAR, and industrial internet, have brought new opportunities. The urgent need for carbon neutrality has made it a hot topic worldwide. ICT also presents great opportunities for implementing a dual carbon strategy. Digital greening and green digitization will become a new direction for this dual carbon implementation. It is beyond doubt that the bottlenecks and constraints of ICT innovation have become more prominent, especially after its rapid upgrade in the past decade. This is despite strong application demand and nearly half a century of development. The existing drivers of innovation such as semiconductor technology and channel capacity are approaching their theoretical limits while John von Neumann's calculation system based on silicon semiconductors is reaching a bottleneck in the big data era. In the short term, it will still be difficult to realize large-scale commercial use of disruptive technologies including quantum computing and neuromorphic computing, and it will become even more difficult to innovate in basic fields that have a more profound impact on ICT technologies. Based on these ideas about the current situation, we believe that in the next decade, it is unlikely that there will be new systems, theories, and materials that will have a huge impact on ICT innovation. Therefore, the main direction of innovation should be to continue with existing approaches to technological development. This approach to innovation mainly consists of three ideas. The first is to continue exploring existing technology and continuously tap into its potential to enhance relevant capabilities. The key areas include Moore's Law related upgrading of integrated circuit technology and IP internet. The second main area is to give full play to systematic thinking and improve capabilities through multi-system and cross-domain integration and innovation. The key areas here are architecture convergence under the development of cloud network synergy, system convergence represented by general computing and dedicated computing. The third idea is to innovate for the future and make disruptive breakthroughs in new systems, new materials, and new components. However, as I mentioned earlier, disruptive breakthroughs in the next decade will be made by continuing to explore existing technologies. Next, I will elaborate on these three ideas and further discuss the key areas of ICT innovation in the future. In terms of continuous development, the progress of integrated circuits is very important. Although it's increasingly difficult to reduce the size of transistors, there is still great potential to improve chip efficiency 
through the development of advanced process technologies and packaging technologies. It will be still possible to increase by several times the density of integrated transistors. In terms of pan-terminal and new interaction, VRAR is a next-generation human-computer interaction tool that has become a key area of innovation in the 5G era. In the future, single-machine VR intelligence will be combined with connected cloud control paths. This will enable us to continuously innovate and upgrade technologies such as near-eye display, perceptual interaction, and rendering computing, upgrading user experience from partial immersion to deep or even full immersion. As human-computer interaction becomes more natural, situational, and intelligent, we will usher in a new era of immersive internet that integrates the virtual and real worlds. Convergent innovation will occur in different ICT fields. We believe that it will focus on three aspects. First, architecture-level convergent innovation. The convergence of cloud and network is a typical example. It has a profound impact on both network and cloud architecture. In the next decade, cloud network convergence will continue to influence network technology innovation and accelerate cloud network integration. The second area is the convergence of different systems. Advanced computing is key to this. Silicon-based chips will remain the basis of computing technology for a long time to come, and John von Neumann system will continue to work. Dedicated computing for specific application requirements will be an effective supplement to general computing. The two components will be integrated, developed, and promoted. Convergent innovation of multiple elements, such as multi-architecture chips, and multiple computing modes can better meet different computing requirements. The third area is the convergence of technologies across different domains. Communication technologies will be more closely integrated with new ICT technologies. This will make networks more intelligent, open, and flexible, and support the goal of making everything intelligent. For mobile communications, the industry has started research on 6G networks, which will make our mobile networks even more performant, open, intelligent, green, secure, and have wider coverage. The convergence of sensing and AI technologies is a key development direction. In addition to conversion with communications technologies, AI itself will also see a trend of convergent innovation. In the next decade, dedicated intelligence will remain the most important direction for technology. The growing diversity and complexity of different ICT scenarios will result in high requirements on the sensing and perception capabilities of AI. The engineering implementation of AI technologies in diverse industries also requires AI applications to be fair, secure, real-time, reliable, and power-efficient. This will promote the innovation and upgrade of AI technologies in deep learning and knowledge convergence, cross-modal multi-technology convergence, and software and hardware engineering convergence. The third focus of innovation is disruptive breakthroughs. There are a lot of things to think about and explore, and there is huge room for imagination. I will give a brief description of the new systems and interactions that have already had some impact on our development. When it comes to system disruption, quantum computing will have the greatest impact in the long run. Because of the advantages of parallel processing, quantum computing can solve the bottleneck problem of John von Neumann's computing architecture and has the potential for exponential acceleration in some fields. In the next decade, quantum computing will be used to explore dedicated applications, a shift from the R&D of prototype hardware and algorithm software. It will help with the initial steps of building an industry ecosystem. 
Continuous breakthroughs in silicon photonics have enabled us to leverage the advantages of optical computing. In scenarios like use of matrices and convolution, optical computing can have much lower power consumption and higher efficiency than traditional electronic computing. The future focus of optical computing technology will be on improving device integration, using silicon photonics, developing and improving algorithms and software suitable for optical computing. Currently, optical computing has been primarily tested on a number of products. In the next three years, it will be applied to AI cloud acceleration. Looking ahead, it will be further applied in scenarios such as autonomous driving and VR. These are our thoughts on the future of ICT innovation. The development of the ICT industry over the past decade has provided unprecedented tools to change the world. We believe that the next decade will be a golden age of ICT innovation. China Academy of Information and Communication Technology is dedicated to working with the industry on ICT innovation. Thank you. The world of the future will be endlessly powerful. Together, let's accelerate the technological revolution and stretch hand in hand towards intelligent world 2030. The ushering in a new era of boundless technology, we will create a fully connected, intelligent world.